setbacks and losses in his own life, he has completed the coaching efforts and how to live his life and all the obstacles that we uh, are dealing with every single day. So he is a speaker, teacher, life coach, and best selling author for over 25 years. He was a Nordstrom store manager, managed in the corporate world, he is a writer of a number of different books. And today he's going to tell us how he can live a life of gratitude and to enhance and live a life. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin, and thank you for inviting me. And uh, I think it all started with Miss Barrington, if I'm not mistaken. By show of hands, how many people here have suffered a significant personal loss in your life? About 90%. I just did a commencement speech at Kamiak High School. Their average age, they're 18 years old, and then I speak at rest homes, average age about 95. So from 18 to 95, it goes anywhere from half the people raise their hands to about 90, 95%. So I want to tell you real quickly about my significant personal loss in my life. It was September 29th, 1998. It was a Tuesday. I woke up and I looked to my side and my wife wasn't there in bed. It was about 6.30 in the morning. That's strange. I wonder where Dana is. Just then my four-year-old Kyle or Connor comes in. Where's mommy? I don't know. Let's figure out what's going on here. And as we're walking down the hallway, Kyle, my 14-year-old, same question. We go, we don't know. So we look in a couple of rooms and we walk down. And we look down the stairs and we can see her down in front of the washer and dryer face down. She's all curled over and it doesn't look good. We go running down there. I turn her over and the stuff's coming out of her mouth and Connor starts crying uncontrollably and Kyle goes, what's going on? I said, go call the police, fire, medics, whatever. And within about five or 10 minutes, there must have been 30 people in our house. And they had her out on the floor and they had these tubes and paddles and that electric shock thing. And it's the most surrealistic thing I'd ever seen. I don't think I'd ever seen anything like that except maybe on TV. You don't even realize what's happening. And for those of you that raised your hand that have gone through something like that, I get to do a couple of presentations a week and I'm always thrilled to be able to talk to people afterwards that tell me some of their stories. We have so much in common, people that have suffered losses. And as Kevin was saying in the bio, how do you get through this life because it's a lot like this. And they tell me these incredible stories. Well, one of the things that I noticed is that time loses all measure. And I didn't know how much time had gone by. I'm just standing by watching these people work on Dana. And this little fire person comes over to me and she goes, Mr. Brooke, we've been working on your wife for 90 minutes. And she still doesn't have a heartbeat. Do you want us to continue? And even when you're in shock, this little computer up here, our CPU, our brain, still has some logic to the, to the uh, circuits. And I went, wow, an hour and a half. And I went, no, you can stop. And she was dead. She was 38 years old. And I think what made it so challenging for me, that was 15 years ago, was prior to that, I had suffered so many losses, I started to really wonder, what is the point of this crazy thing called life? My mother had died of cancer. My father was a very prominent Seattle attorney. He committed suicide. A couple of buddies in Vietnam, a couple more the night I graduated from Queen Anne High School in a car accident. And I just thought, I just don't know how I'm going to be able to take this. And within a couple of days, I walked up on the deck. We lived down by Green Lake. And I remember pinching myself and going, I don't think I can do this. And for the first time in my life, and I hope the last, I realized why people kill themselves. I thought, I just don't think I can do this. And Green Lake was about a mile from Aurora the Aurora Bridge, that'd be simple. I just walk over the Aurora Bridge and jump off. It's real easy. But I sat there for about five or ten minutes just kind of staring out at the sky and I thought, you know what? I'm not going to do it. I got a four-year-old and a 14-year-old. They've already lost their mother, so why don't I go jump off a bridge and have them have no parent at all? So once you make a decision not to do something, it's no longer an option. So as things have gone on in life and other things have happened, it's not an option anymore because I made it decided. I decided rather not to have it be an option. But I realized so much of what happens in life, it really does, thinking as I try to meet as many people as I can, whenever I get to some of these, uh, these presentations, just depends on the layout, and I got a chance to talk to Leland, and Michael, and Vin. Vin, are you paying attention? Just checking. Uh, Mary Jo, look, he looks up. Oh my God, the speaker called me out. Um, Dan, whoever it might be, is it Eric? You were sitting next to me. 
and just to get different perspectives because everybody is dealing with this crazy thing called life but it depends on how you look at us so each one of you people always ask me don't you use a PowerPoint I go no because I want to look at every single pair of eyes that that cami act there must have been 500 kids there I can still see a lot of them. you can get this connection with people so it's how you look at something so I would like you to all stand up if you'd be so kind. I hope most people are done with lunch. And I want you to take your right hand, extend it high, and turn it in a clockwise manner. Now for the younger set that just got out of high school, here's a watch which will show clockwise. Because these, these kids go, it's all digital. What, what is a clock face? And I go, for gosh sakes. Anyway, that's clockwise. Keep it turning clockwise. Now just start slowly bringing it down. Keep it going clockwise. Bring it down to the top of your head, your eyes, nose chin and to your waist now what direction is it going counterclockwise. counterclockwise very good thank you so you can sit down <laughs> there's always a few there's always a few it's my favorite thing is all these people going like what the hell just happened um, I have these fraternity brothers that are I get together with once a month about from about 40 years ago and I met with them recently and one of them says to me you know I've seen your little presentation and frankly I'm not that impressed and, they, and I went, okay, that's fine. I said, said, but then he follows up and he goes, so how does this work? Oh, well, if you're not so impressed, how can you know what this is? And he says, well, do they change direction midstream? I said, no, you knucklehead. I said, you look at it from above and below. Clockwise, counterclockwise. It's just a way of saying it depends on how we look at it. So now, does everybody, can everybody grab the little three by five card that's in front of you and get a pen? And as if anybody that needs a pen, I know this is a lunch group, Anybody need pens? I have a few extra pens, so I'm going to do a little exercise here. Whoa. All right. Thank you, Heidi. Uh, there's hopefully a whole bunch. You need one. For those of you that already have your pen, upper left-hand corner, I want you to write, I see you as, those four words. Upper left-hand corner. That's big. It's pretty small. Goodness gracious. There you go. More? A couple more for the back table. Thank you. And everybody, pens, pens, pens. Upper left hand corner, I see you as. And then leave the, 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 the to the right area blank. And then the lower right hand corner, sign your name. Sign it or just write it. Sign or write your name, lower right hand corner. And so pick a partner. I don't care if you know the person or not. Partner up with somebody. And where it says, I see you as, or you can have if there's any odds. And here's what I want you to do. To the right of I see you as, write your partner's name. And whether you know this person or not does not matter. So here's what we're going to do. I want you to look at that person and I'm going to give you 60 seconds, 60 seconds to write how you see them. Adjectives, I see them as happy, energetic, outgoing, whatever it might be. 60 seconds, go and write what you think of that partner. Go. About 20 seconds. Okay, stop. Now what I want you to do, to your partner, I'll give you another 60 seconds, read to each other what you wrote about each other. Go. Thank <laughs> you. 
stop. Now I would like you to give your partner the card that's about them. And typically I do talks, I do workshops, I do uh, keynote speeches, I do a lot of different things. But in workshops, when I go into companies and things, if we have time, I'll go around the room and have people read what they wrote about somebody else. So I can't do that today because I've only got 25, 30 minutes, very limited time. But I would like to ask, for the people that are looking the card, at the card, the person wrote about you, how many people are likely to hold on to that card? Oh, Almost everybody. <laughs> that is my illustration of what embracing gratitude will do for you. Because that's how somebody sees you. We are all so critical of ourselves. I don't understand it. Somebody once said to me, you know, we say things to ourselves we'd never say to a friend. This word that starts with this letter and has an O and an S and an E and an R. I stopped saying about 20 years ago. I don't understand why I would ever say that. But that's what embracing gratitude is. Gratitude has to do with, somebody asked me at Sun Katie over the weekend, they did a, a workshop and he goes, what's the Webster's of gratitude? And I said, well, I, I could look it up. And I said, I think it has to do with appreciating everything you have and focusing on everything you're, you're thankful for or appreciative versus what you, what you don't have. I talk about gratitude makes you appreciate this versus this. The media, all this negative stuff, that card will remind you of all the things. And I hear it. I was listening to, uh, don't tell me, Linda. And, and she, I see you as, what would she say, well-dressed and energetic and smile. I mean, you could just hear it. So it's just phenomenal. And so I love that exercise because I tell people, I coach people and that are depressed and down and dealing with all these different things. I go, if you focus on the things that you're really good at, and that are good in your life, look how it's going to look. And that's why I love the, the counterclockwise, clockwise thing. So I talk about five things. The first one is embracing gratitude. The second thing is you just can't give up. You just can't ever quit. You just can't. I'm 60 freaking four years old. <laughs> and I know Dan's looking at me going, man, he doesn't look a day over 63. But the thing is, is that I wanted to be a speaker when I was 19 and all this other bad as, as stuff happened to me in my life. But that's the way it works. A couple years ago I was managing, I am always managed big box as you heard what Kevin said. I managed Nordstrom stores for a long time. Later I managed Lowe's home improvement centers. Two years ago I walked out of Lowe's, came home, Connor 17 at the time and I said I quit. He goes, what are you doing? I'm going to be a speaker. He goes, well that's just super dad. Um, <laughs> and just what are we going to do for food? And I said, just, it's okay, it's okay, just, just trust me, it's going to be all right. But you cannot give up. Anybody a pilot here? Pilots, Dan's a pilot. What's your name? Rich Van Winkle. Rich Van Winkle, nice to meet you both. So for the people that are pilots, we'll know that there's a lot of things they teach and a lot of it has to do with visual flight rules versus instrument flight rules. I got caught in some IFR situations that were really very, very sad. But I will tell you what my instructor said to me, he said, don't ever give up. I had three different structures when I learned how to fly. And I thought that was really a curious comment. Don't ever give up because it shouldn't be use your checklist and check to make sure there's gas in the tank and file a flight plan and all these things that seem logical. Yeah. And, um, but I got in a mess down in uh, Ocean Shores and I was with some friends and I went to land and all of a sudden this storm came in and I was in IFR, instrument flight rules, all the clouds. It's like being in a car that has snow on it. You can't see anything. And I really started to panic and I remember what Jay had said. He said, don't give up. And all of a sudden that seemed to have a meaning because I, I pull up and I'm kind of heading back to Seattle because I'm just, just so scared. I probably only have 100 hours at the time. And I pull up so, so fast the stall horn goes on. Now the plane's going to stall. So it's beeping and I push the nose forward. And, and now I'm trying to get a hold of center, 3966 Mike. I can't raise anybody. I want to vector back to Seattle. And then I notice I'm a 60 degree bank turn to the right, which is like over 45, and I think I'm straight and level. Now we're going to do a John Kennedy Jr. deal, where you just fall over and go into a spiral and a spin. But I remember what Jay said, don't ever give up. So I, I, hit, I happened to have a heading bug in this plane, turned the heading bug on, it broke, brought the wings level, and I felt like I was this, I had vertigo, felt like I was upside down. But I just did not give up because of what he told me. 
But we were traveling down there at about 3,000 feet. We're still in the clouds, heading back 4,000, 5,000, 6,000. And I keep thinking we're going to hit a mountain. I can't get a hold of center. We're going to hit another plane. Hopefully, I can keep it straight and level. 8,000, 9,000, 10,000, 11,000 feet. Thank goodness we pop out of the clouds. I can see Seattle in the distance. And I said to my friends, because we were going down there for dinner, hey, let's go to the Red Robin back in Seattle. <laughs> what do you think of that? <laughs> well, I thought we were going to Ocean Shores. And I said, oh, we're just lucky we're alive. I told, them, I told them this later. I said, you don't understand how close we were to dying. And I said, but Dave, you were so cool. <laughs> oh, God. It was all because my instructor said not to give up. So I tell people, it doesn't matter. I don't care if I'm 64. I wanted to be a speaker at 19. I don't care where you are. Lena was telling me about Michael and then he did the dentist thing and then he raced the cars and he wants to come back and be the dentist. One of the biggest things I find out today is the people that don't have a purpose. Gratitude and embracing everything you have in your life versus what you don't have will really get you focused on a purpose. Tons of my buddies have died that, that retired, made a ton of money and they have no purpose now. So I talk about takes as long as it takes, don't ever give up. Next thing is you got to make room for gratitude. You got to get rid of the junk in your brain. I live down here, uh, just a little bit south here of Mill Creek. Had one of those, those nice houses and I'd go by and I think those three things in front of the houses that look like they're for cars are supposed to be for cars. <laughs> and you go by and the doors are up and it's just boxes from floor to ceiling. <laughs> I know you guys have seen this. And, and there's this little space in the center and you see these people going like this to get a box. You know, and I go, what, where did you get all that junk? It's just stuff. That's the best word I've ever, I've ever had to describe that. But you have got to get rid of the junk in your brain. And I notice that people will like take stuff in their life, like you figuratively figure they're driving, they drive over the stuff, they pick it up behind them, put it in front of them and drive over it again. And here's where I notice this the most in workshops. No, Mr. Speaker, you don't understand. My ex-husband has ruined my life. Oh boy, here's an ex-husband story. And I go, well, okay, I'm sorry, when did you guys get divorced? Uh, 1988. <laughs> That was like 30 years ago. I said, you're still using that as your excuse? You got to get rid of that stuff. When you guys go out to your cars today, pay attention to how deep that windshield is. About two feet deep, and it's about four feet wide. That's pretty good size, eight, 10 square feet. And then notice the rear view mirror. It's about like this. So kind of keep that in proportion. Now, mostly pay attention to what's in front of you. you learn something from behind you. If you see flashing blue lights, you got to pull over, but mostly pay attention to what's in front of you. That's why I love those cards when you focus on what you have versus what you don't have. So, takes as long as it takes. Embrace gratitude. It takes as long as it takes. Never give up. Make room for gratitude. Get the junk out of your brain. I cannot get over how many people have junk in their brain. Telling the same stories back to 1988 with that divorce and so forth. So I have this buddy. Oh, in fact, I wanted to tell you this. I heard this the other day. Can you be happy without being grateful? I don't know, my book, one of the books I sell says happiness starts with gratitude. John Lennon was five years old. His mother comes up to him one day and says, I want to tell you what your number one goal in life should be. John Lennon says, what's that? She goes, to be happy. John thinks about it, oh, that's cool, okay, thanks mom. She says, that's the number one goal, more than anything else. A few years later, he's in school and they're going around the room they come to John Lennon and the teacher says, what do you want to be when you grow up? John Lennon says, happy. So the teacher looks at John Lennon and says, you don't understand the assignment. John Lennon looks at the teacher and goes, you don't understand life. And I think it's really true And you look at the music that they made and some of the things that they talked about, but I think it's so important because again, back to that finger exercise, back to those three by five cards, it's how you look at something. So after Dana had passed away, Dana died of a prescription pill overdose. Vicodin and Oxycontin. Unbelievable. Just unbelievable. I, I went to the place once and she was arrested for prescription fraud. I'd never seen a person arrested before. And then she was in detox three different times. She finally overdosed that day. And um, we lost everything too. It's not only Dana. But because she took all the pills, she took all our money, so we lost our house, I lost my business, we lost everything. I don't even like to go into that because it's more important about how it can help you folks as opposed to my story. But a buddy of mine says to me, you know, you're really messed up. I said, well, thanks, you know Dana died. 
And um, he goes, no, I know. But, and he says, you need to get a gratitude journal. Now, how many people here have ever heard of a gratitude journal? Wow, that's really cool. Because a lot of people have heard of a journal. Well, I never had. And so I went on Amazon and I got one and I bought it and I just put it on the shelf. It didn't touch it for three months. And then I started writing in it and I noticed all these amazing things happening. Really good stuff because I was focusing on what I had versus what I didn't have. Even though I've had, I didn't tell you about another 10 or 15 people who have passed away or other traumatic experiences because it's not important. It's not getting knocked down, it's getting up, which is really important in this life and you've heard that before. So I, I decided to make my own gratitude journal and I, I do it and it says the day and the date and the daily number which we'll come to in a second. Special occasions, uh, any current events, that's so you don't have to have a diary. Here's what you're grateful for. Highlight your day is the best thing that happened to you yesterday. And then this is your gratitude intentions which a lot of people miss out on. That is being grateful for something that hasn't even happened yet. This takes, I have timed this countless times. I write in this gratitude journal every single day. Five minutes is how long this takes. And the daily number is something very important because that kind of anchors where you are. Ten is maybe the best day of your life and one is maybe one of the toughest days. And you, by, by sort of figuring out that number every single day, you can kind of anchor it and you can go back and you can look at, and I usually don't, I always have my own journal here, but um, most days I'm an eight or a nine. But I'll tell you that uh, that really changed how I looked at things because my mother who had died of cancer was manic depressive and so she took lithium and all this crazy stuff and actually it straightened her out after a while but she was always threatening suicide to me when I was in high school and she'd call me and she'd shake these little pills and go you either come over here or I'm taking all these pills right now so unfortunately I think I got some of that from her and um, the depression bug is a killer for a lot of people and so one day I woke up in fact it was a Starbucks down by Fred Meyer I was not was not that far from here and I was a two that's how bad my day was. I don't know what is wrong with me. I'm so depressed. I don't get the point of this whole thing. This is ridiculous. I got these two boys. And, but I went down to Starbucks. I took my gratitude journal and I wrote in it. So grateful for the many things I was grateful for. And that bumped me up to about four or five. And then I had a talk to do that day up in Burlington. It was at the Burlington Chamber of Commerce, 150, 200 people. And I did the talk and after I'm done, I've got my books and people come over and they buy books and journals and things like this. But more importantly, they tell me their stories. Or they say, I want to have a cup of coffee and tell you what happened to me and how I've gotten my life back on track. And this gal comes up to me and she's standing right in front of me and she's crying. She goes, my name is Janice and I just want to tell you, you just changed my life. And for those of you that have heard something like that, anybody who's in a position of authority or business owners, teachers, managers, owners, directors, doesn't matter. It's very powerful. And I remember saying to her, well, I don't think I changed your life, but maybe I gave you the tools to do it. She goes, well, that may be true. And I said, what was it? She goes, I can't tell you. It'll get me too upset. But I walked back out to my car and I realized now I'm a nine. I've gone to two, to a four, to a five, to a nine. Never did any coke. I never did any dope. I never drank something. I never took a pill. These are all these ways people want to try to cope. But here's the problem. They're destructive and in the case of my wife, they're deadly. She'd gotten hooked on that Viking and Oxycontin stuff and never could get off it. She was tall and blonde and beautiful. We used to run Green Lake. She could, I'm a fast runner. She could kick my rear and she died. So it's a, it's a healthy coping mechanism in a world of so many unhealthy ones. And what I found that was so interesting about it is that when you write in it and when you focus on that, in fact, it's funny because I'll do, I had this, I was over at Sun Katie, as I mentioned, and I'm like complete, so anybody's interested in a journal, I'll, I'll have to mail you some. But people come up to me and they go, so uh, this is your gratitude journal, I see you, yeah. And then they, can I look at it? And I go, sure. They thumb through it and they go, wow, you write in this every day. <laughs> have you been listening to the presentation? <laughs> Did you like, I mean, of course I write in every day. It saved my life, if you ask me. So, it makes such a big difference. In fact, here's what I want to do. Grab your business cards real quick because I want to do a drawing for a book. And you'll see my cards there, but grab your book, if you, or grab your business card, if you will. And hopefully, you've got the pens. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have uh, Heidi help me with this in a second. But I do want to do a drawing. Oh. And two things on your cards, if you would. 
I send out a gratitude video every Monday morning at 7.45 a.m. If you want to get that video, great. If not, put an X on your card. And then the second thing is, I also do a lot of life coaching and I coach people how to deal with their stress, but now more importantly, people that want to write a book. If you're interested in that, put a C on the card and I'll, I'll do a little 45 minute consultation for you for free. So, um, Heidi, can you collect the cards for me? You'd be so kind. And I do speak a lot at businesses that do workshops that want to get their employees on a much better track as well. So, so let me tell you, anybody written a book here? Book? Ben, all right. V-I-E-N? I saw it on the sign, just cheating. Um, so I want to tell you about writing a book. This one is called, this is one I'm going to draw for. It's called Happiness Starts with Gratitude. And I have my journals over here. And again, I'm out of them, which I feel really bad. So if anybody wants to buy them, they're $15 a piece. But if you want to buy one today, I'll send you two for $25. And I'll mail it and take care of the shipping. Because I had no idea I was going to sell as many over the weekend. But when you write a book, one of the primary reasons that you write a book is to help people. At least that was for me. So, but there's some things that have kind of made me laugh along the way. So I'm doing a drawing, and I always like to give away a book. And this is 50 Gratitude Lessons to Direct, Empower, and Inspire You. So, uh, this gal was a couple months ago. And so they, they picked the name, and I never forget her name was Sally. So they clap, clap, clap into Sally and she walks up front and I'm on the podium and I hand it, you know, kind of like this to her. Here you go, Sally. So they're all cheering. Good going, Sally. And she's walking back to her seat and I said, you know, if you'd like later, I'll sign that for you. She goes, no thanks. <laughs> and so I just thought, I'm just trying to make a difference. I don't think I'm anything special. But I, I will tell you this though. So I love to make sure everybody knows the modules. Embrace gratitude. You saw that. It takes as long as it takes. Don't ever give up. Make room for gratitude. Clear out your brain. Get a gratitude journal. If you buy mine, you get a spiral notebook. I don't care. You cannot believe how much this will reframe and refocus your life on what you have versus what you don't have. And I will also say that because of the fact I do chambers and businesses, whenever I talk to businesses, it is amazing not only when I get to do workshops, but any company that cares about their employees is grateful for their job. You can be a, a dentist like Michael and have a building and all these different things, but if you're grateful for yourself, for your wife, for your family, for your employees, it is amazing how well those employees will do. When I was at Nordstrom, I got, uh, I don't like to again tell too much about myself other than just to establish credibility. I got eight promotions in 15 years. Store manager of the year and all this fancy stuff, and it was one simple thing. The golden rule. Wow. I treat people. Dan, will you do me a favor? When you get a second, can you redo these chairs? You know, Eric, when you have time, can you over get this over here? Just, just help it. Oh, thank you. And so it makes such a big difference on how we look at people. And so in the business world, it goes too. So final thing, sharing gratitude. Gosh, I hope there's nobody in here with network marketing. Because you know what people in network marketing, they're always so excited. Hey, can we get together and let's have coffee? And I go, sure. And so we meet at Starbucks and then I go to the bathroom and then there's all these vitamins on the table, you know. And, and it's, it's, it's fine. It's, it's just, I, how can you argue with that level of enthusiasm? But you, in order to help yourself, one of the best ways to help yourself is to help others. And as much tragedy and trauma as I've had, I cannot tell you how much it helps me to help other people. So, oh, do you have that? Oh, there's a basket right there. I was going to draw that. Please ask me to sign it too. Um, <laughs> anyway, i got just a couple minutes left. Uh, Eric. Is that you, Eric? Woo! Eric Shaw? <laughs> and actually, if you ask me to sign it in front of these guys, I'll give you 20 bucks. <laughs> Could I get your thumbprint? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's very good. Okay, so last thing. Sharing gratitude. How many people here have been on their smartphone since I've been talking? One. Vin? Yeah, I, I, I thought I busted you. <laughs> it's okay. Grab your smartphones. There's always a couple of honest people in the room. You can always tell. Everybody grab your smartphones. Here's what I want you to do. I just got a couple minutes left. This is called the four T's. I want you to text, tweet, telephone, or tell somebody in your world how great you are for them. And I'll give you one minute to do it. Go. Most people text, but you can also use this as a telephone. That's how it was originally designed. <laughs> Just write a note. 
It's okay. Your husband told him to get you one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> About 30 seconds. Some people are coarser faster than others. Okay, stop. That's been about a minute. You can finish those later. When I was at Camiac, oh, by the way, when I was at Camiac, when they did that, I see you as, that didn't work too well because they go, I see you as an idiot. And I go, no. <laughs> <laughs> Typical kids. I went, no, you don't say idiot. You talk about their qualities. Gosh. But they could do about six texts in 30 seconds. They said, I did six of them. And I went, whoa. So, but every so often, most people text, I'll see somebody on the phone. And I was in the Performing Arts Center the other day, and the, the gal was right about where Linda is. She was not too far away from me, so I could hear her on the phone. And she's going, yes, honey, and I think it was her husband. I just want to tell you how grateful I am for you. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I love you so much, too. I don't know. Some speaker just told me to call you and tell you. <laughs> and I just went, I went, God, no, it's supposed to be your idea. <laughs> and then somebody else, they come up and they show me afterwards, and they would go, um, look at this one. And I go, what is it? And it goes, I'm grateful for you, too. What's up? <laughs> you know. <laughs> and then there was one the other day, it was... Um, <laughs> Have you, were you sure you sent this to the right person? <laughs> it made me laugh. So anyway, um, last thing. So sharing gratitude. That's a good way to share gratitude. And people, it does make me laugh when people, why are you send me this note? Well, why not every day? But when we think of it, we probably don't do it enough. But to remind people how grateful you are to have them in our lives. So I never did drugs. I never did dope. I never smoked a cigarette. I never drank. And it's just something I chose not to do, but I was always an adrenaline junkie. The flying and the hydroplanes I was talking to Michael and Lena about, and I think Ben was asking, and Mary Jo was too. And, uh, but that was the thrill for me. So I had to do the bungee jumping and all this craziness. And so uh, beside years ago, the same fraternity brothers. We're going to go skydiving. So I make a reservation for eight out of Issaquah, which is long gone. So on Saturday, I made the reservation about a week before. About Monday or Tuesday, I get a call, and there's like... Uh, can't make it. And then by Wednesday, I got a call from a couple more of them. Hey, Dave, <coughs> let me guess, you're sick. Yeah, I got a really bad sore throat. We'll do it another time. <coughs> and I just went, you chickens. So it's 10 o'clock Saturday. I walk up to Issaquah to the counter and I go, hi. And he goes, can I help you? And I go, hi, David Brook, party of eight. And he goes, uh, where's your friends? <laughs> and I said, I don't have any. <laughs> and I went all by myself. And they took a little picture out of it. And it shows me, it was just a static line. I did the free fall thing later. But it shows me jumping out of the airplane. I have that picture today. But I didn't get to share that with anybody. Except for that picture. So when you get to send somebody a gratitude text or call them or tell them, watch what they do and say. And pay attention to that. Use a gratitude journal. It'll make such a huge difference. I stand before you today to say that it can change your life. It can transform your life. And I think, in my case, I would not be here today without understanding the power of gratitude and looking at life that way. And it can do the same thing for you guys. Thanks a lot.